Selenium now gives you real-time visibility into browser network activity with WebDriver Baidai. In this video, we'll intercept an API request from a web app and mock the server response with a custom JSON using Selenium Baidai in Java. This will allow us to reproduce server error conditions and edge cases without touching the backend or adding special flags. Let's dive in. Quick background before we start. Classic WebDriver follows a request response model. Your script sends a command, the browser performs the action and sends a response back. WebDriver Baidai, short for bidirectional, opens a persistent WebSocket so the browser can stream events back, letting your test react in real time. That gives you visibility into things like console logs and network events. We'll start out with a simple Java project with the latest Selenium dependencies. Nothing extra is required. We'll define the driver, an explicit weight, the network module, and an intercepts IDs list. Every time we add an intercept, Selenium gives us an ID, and we save those IDs so we can remove the intercepts later in teardown. We'll start out with a method where we can create Chrome options and enable the Baidai connection by setting WebSocket URL to true. Once that's on, Selenium exposes a network module where we can listen for requests. Then we start Chrome driver, create a 10 second web driver wait for explicit waits, and instantiate the Baidai network module. From here, we can add intercepts and provide custom responses. Now let's create a method for intercepting the search API. First, I'll go to the Toolshop test website and open the DevTools network tab and search for a tool, uh, let's say Hammer. Here we see that the site calls the search API and the server provides this response body and the user interface renders the available results. For our test, let's say we need to see what happens when hammers go missing. So we'll intercept that search request and return a custom response to see how the UI behaves in that case. And that's how you could also reproduce any server error conditions or edge cases without touching the backend. We'll cover that in a separate video. So in this method, we scope the intercept to the exact query. So it's only fired when we search for that specific term. It takes three parameters, host, path, and the search term. We need to encode the search value in case it has spaces, so it should be safe to put into the URL. So we'll create a small helper like this. Now build the query string appending the encoded value. Then we build a URL pattern matching the HTTPS protocol, the host and path, and the search value. In this precise pattern, only single query params will be blocked. If your API adds more params like page numbers, you'll need to adjust the pattern. Calling this registers the intercept in the before request sent phase. That means the request will be stopped before it goes to the server. Selenium returns an intercept ID. We store it in the intercept ID list so teardown can remove it later. Now, this method sets up the intercept and the mock response for the given tool name. We want the browser to receive this JSON body in the response instead of the real server response. It matches the API's response schema but represents an empty result set with an empty data array and null from two page numbers. We scope the intercept to the host path and the query param set to the tool name so that only exact search is blocked. Next, we register a listener for before request sent events. This event fires for every request. So we inspect request data to get the URL and the HTTP method. We only handle requests that were blocked by the intercept. And event is blocked tells us that. If it's not blocked, we return and do nothing. We also check the method type. If it's a get method, we construct a provide response parameters object using the request ID. Set the status code 200, 
add cores and content type headers so the browser can read what we send, and set the body to our custom JSON string. Then this sends that modified response back to the browser. Here we log a message to confirm the intercept. A fallback to continue request is called for all other method types. Now create a method to perform the search action. So I'll go to the website to identify the locators for search input box, search button, and the search results container. We wait for the search input to be clickable, clear it, type the tool name, and click the search button. In teardown, we iterate over all intercept IDs and remove them. Then we close the network module. Finally, we quit the browser so nothing is left, even if an exception occurs. The entry point constructs the class and calls run. This method ties everything together. Here we first call setup. Then, before navigating to the website, we call mock item not found to register the intercept. This order is important because the intercept needs to be registered first, so the request is already being watched when the page triggers it. Then we navigate to the website and perform the search, and the intercept pattern matches that query string. Here we use a simple wait with a lambda to fetch the text content from the search results container once it's available. Then we assert that the text contains something like uh, no products found. In the finally block, we call teardown to remove intercepts, close network, and quit the driver. Now let's run the test. Okay, the assertion isn't getting triggered, so we know the test passed. To confirm this, change the expected text to something like no products here and run the test again. Here we see that the actual message is there are no products found, so the expected message doesn't match now. Thanks for watching, and if you found this helpful, press the like button and stay tuned for more automation tips.